Hi everybody, it is Jonathan Keller from California Family Council and happy to be back with you here at the California State Capitol building. Uh, we are in Sacramento on Tuesday the 10th of April. Some of you may have already watched my video from last week where we were talking about AB 2943 which is a really serious bill uh, that is going to affect really every Californian, especially those people of faith especially anybody that is trying to preach the gospel and talk about God's hope and healing that he offers to every single person. And on that note, we had a hearing today in the Judiciary Committee. We had some amazing, very heartfelt testimony from my guests today. Uh, those are Elizabeth Wanning and Ken Williams, both from Equipped to Love, which is a ministry of Bethel Church up in Reading. And I, I really wanna just get some instant reaction. I know many of you have been really concerned about this bill. The video we did last week has over 30,000 views. It's one of our most viewed videos of all time. And I want Ken to be able to kind of open and share a little bit about his testimony, what he shared with the Judiciary Committee. And it really was, it really was compelling. I mean, you could have actually heard a pin drop, I think, at several points throughout the testimony. So Ken, tell us, tell us about what you shared and why you and Bethel have taken really the extraordinary step of uh, coming really fully into the public square and engaging on this legislation. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, wow, there's no way we could keep silent right now. Um, that when you have experienced the changes that Elizabeth and I have experienced in our lives by, by getting to know the Lord deeply and finding our identity in Him. So I'm talking about coming out of homosexuality. I'm talking about sexual desires changing from being attracted to men to being attracted to women for me. And when something that dramatic happens in your life, you don't be quiet about it. You, because the, the world out there does not know that that is possible. Today is the very first day in my life. I'm 46 year old male, Christian, living in America. And today is the very first day I have ever felt discriminated against. I've been rejected. That's part of having a homosexual you know, background is lots of rejection, lots of lots of pain, lots of being misunderstood. Today is the first day I felt discriminated against because we watched uh, this bill, AB 2943, pass now through the second committee. It's screaming through the legislature right now. And you need to be aware that there is a freight train coming toward you, toward your ability to help minister life and encouragement and wholeness to the people in your life that you know that are struggling sexually, that are struggling with their sexual identity, that have same-sex desires that they don't want to live out. A freight train is coming. Are you hearing me? You are going to lose your ability to be able to have resources that you can point your friend to. They won't be able to buy books. People that are struggling and want to walk out a Christian life in line with the gospel that says that uh, such were some of you. You may have been an idolater, you may have been a drunkard, you may have been a homosexual, but such were some of you. Your ability to put resources into their hands, to be able to even help them by paying for them to go see an expert therapist that could help them walk out of that pain. That's going away if this bill goes through. You won't be able to do that. You can't point them to a curriculum that someone has created. We're, we've been working on curriculum to be able to help these people that have, are wanting to slit their wrists because they don't know who they are. They are absolutely crying out for identity and you won't be able to pay for their curriculum to help them in their deepest point of pain they've ever had in their whole lives. If there's ever been a time to mobilize the church, it is right now. We must defeat this bill and the other bills, AB 2119 and AB 1779. We've got to get this taken care of and out of the legislature so that we can continue to love the people that really need it. This is so important, but she's going to tell you how you have to do this without hurting the gay people, without hurting the LGBTQ precious people that Jesus died for. She's going to tell you about that, right? Wow. <laughs> no passion there. I feel strongly. <laughs> um, you know, the thing is, Ken and I have slightly different stories. He grew up in the church, and immediately when he started coming alive in puberty, realized his desires towards men and began pulling away, like, oh, how do I follow the Lord and have this experience of life? I grew up in a different kind of church. Um, during my teenage years, started kind of grappling with my sexuality, but then in my 20s, came out and fully embraced my identity as a lesbian. You know, I went to seminary openly gay as a lesbian. And, and so we have very different experiences. I can say, you know, my heart is for the gay community. I, 
I was loved so well in the gay community. I have great, I've had some of the most important friendships and community of my life in the gay community. And I see this as, unfortunately, such a polarizing issue that how is the church going to even be able to evangelize the community? And how are we going to recognize um, sanctification when it starts to happen among the gay community? The nature of being born again is this transformation that we're talking about. And so all of our testimonies, everything, you know, the discipleship project or process through which the Lord brought me of coming to terms with my true identity and my true self, we'll have to hide that somehow. And so it's a it's such an affront to even the born again Christian experience. I mean it's it's a blaring signal that culture has no idea that you are born again when you're Christian. And that means that everything from your past falls away and you're through the power of Christ given liberty to walk towards a new identity in the Lord that aligns with the Bible. It's not something, it's not a philosophical or an ideology, ideological thing that you do to fix yourself. It's something that the Lord is in that empowers to bring freedom and wholeness. And so this bill basically stifles any acknowledgement of the power of the gospel from my I think you can tell both from Ken and from Elizabeth that they are very passionate and I think really what your testimonies remind me of, I, I just think of uh, the woman in scripture where Jesus says, you know, uh, you know, he or she who is forgiven much loves much. Yes. And I think the key that we need to point out to our friends here who are watching, and I know that, I mean, I have friends who are members of the LGBT community who might be watching this video. I think we need to point out that the reason that we're opposing this bill is not out of animus, it's not out of anger, it's not out of yeah. hatred, it's not out of um, any sort of disdain for people who identify as LGBT. Uh, it's out of love. And right. I, I think Jesus told us that we are all created in his image. Um, we obviously also believe that God has a specific design for marriage and for sexuality, but he also calls us to love every single person. No matter where they are on their journey of faith, no matter where they are um, in their in their life, life circumstances. Yeah, yeah. we're called to love, and that's one reason why stepping a little bit beyond the specific statistics of this bill, and we're going to come back to that in a minute. But really quick, I love the name of the ministry that you two both lead for Bethel, which is called. Uh, it's not equipped for truth. It's not equipped to push back. It's not. It's not an aggressive ministry. It's equipped to love. So, tell us a little bit, real quick. For people who are watching, um, what is the ministry of Quip to Love and, and why, again, would your very ministry actually be threatened by this legislation? Uh, we, our ministry would be totally threatened by this legislation because we wouldn't be able to, uh, to do anything proactive to be able to um, get resources to people. Or if we wanted to hold a conference or something and be able to serve a whole bunch of people, we can't charge, it has to be totally pro bono. I don't know where we're going to come up with that money. But we want to help, we want to help everybody that could possibly want help. Listen, we called it equipped to love because the church, okay, now we're going to do some, some talk in the living room right now. We didn't handle the gay community so well for a few, several decades, okay? So the reason I wasn't able to get any help for a long time and the reason I almost killed myself was because all I had ever heard from anyone, certainly anyone in the church, was that homosexuals are terrible people. They're going to hell, they're sinners, they're the worst of the worst people. Now that does not draw anyone to you. That makes you think that you're the worst thing in the world. I thought I was the worst thing in the world. I thought I was absolutely detestable. And it kept me for years from ever coming out to my parents even and, and saying as much as I knew they loved me, I didn't even feel like I could tell them because the entire culture around me said, we hate you. We are not asking your name. When we're picking it out there, we didn't. We held up signs that said how bad these people were. We didn't ask their name. We just yelled at them. We just threw stones at them. So we can't do that anymore. These are the people. These are our people. Elizabeth and I. These are our people. Okay. We're in America. People have rights. They don't have to live out my convictions. They don't have to live out your convictions or your convictions or your convictions. They get to live their own convictions as long as it doesn't harm someone else. But this bill is going to take away my ability, your ability, to live out your convictions. It takes that away. 
But we have to realize that forget about the bills, we have to be about the business of extravagantly loving whoever is in front of us. I don't interview people to find out exactly what they believe or what kind of sin they're involved in or what they consider sin or not sin before I decide to love them. Or at least on a good day, I don't. <laughs> Right? We can't do that. We have got to stop the us versus them. So the last thing I want to happen right now is for the religious right to rise up and now we're gonna be, we're gonna go out there and say, these bills are horrible and you guys are trying to take away. No, people are living their convictions. Right. People are living their own convictions. The thing is, we don't want someone's convictions to take away someone else's convictions because I wanna be able to help reach the people who need help. <laughs> Just let me tell you a little bit about so, um, Ken and I, this ministry um, has a heart for the gay community to create safety and refuge for gay people to come into churches. That's my heart. There needs to be a safe place for gay people. If they can't come to the church to get safety and to have community, then where else can they come? And Nowhere else. So, I mean, I'm very passionate to, to talk to pastors and to grapple with the theology that, in, that is involved yeah, to create it's, it's safety really for gay like, people um, without, without budging okay. on scriptural yeah, values. Um, so, I mean, we walk with, we mentor and disciple people, so our process isn't all therapeutic. We, we um, disciple people into a closer relationship with the Lord where they gain their identity. You know, your, your identity um, is always solidified when you know God. And so that's our, always our first priority. Yep. Um, and then we talk to pastors and leaders and we, we grapple with this issue. Like, how do you love well? How do you honor? How do you respect people? But then how do you support people? How, you know, what do you do when, when someone comes out to you? What do you do when a gay couple comes into your church? How are you gonna respond in the character of Jesus? You know, and then we want to support parents and families and friends you know, this, this issue is so divisive, it's broken up so many families, yeah. uh, so many friendships have been lost, and parents don't know what to do. Parents really want to love their children, but then they hear this other voice of, well, if you love your child, then maybe you're, you're condoning or you're expressing tolerance for or even encouraging them in, in a lifestyle you know could be destructive to them. And so there's so much confusion. So there's really three different arms of our ministry just seeking to shore up all these different angles to walk really mercifully, I mean, really compassionately. We, we want to be able to talk to people face to face and acknowledge them, love them. You know, true love is, is as Jesus expressed, sacrificial. It, it means that we put the other person first. We, we seek the other person's welfare before ourselves. And we need to learn how to do that. We could probably keep going on for a long time, and I guarantee you this is not the last one of these videos that we're going to do. But um, as you can see, capital photos wait for no no man or woman. Um, so there is another group that has the permit out here. So I just want to close very quickly with a, a call to action. Um, like Ken said, um, I would I would beg and plead with you, please go to the website for California Family Council. Go to CaliforniaFamily.org. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, please follow us. Please share this video. We need your help to get this word out. Um, this bill has already passed two committees now in just the span of one, one week. week. So they are really fast tracking this bill. And I think they are fast tracking it because even they realize how dangerous it is. And they are afraid of the church rising up and engaging. Not again, like Ken said, not engaging out of anger, not engaging out of vitriol or frustration but engaging and saying no, because we are compelled to love our neighbors, we, we cannot stay silent. That's right. We cannot sit on the sidelines, we have to engage. So I would strongly encourage you to go to our website, californiafamily.org, click on the sign up button at the top of the website and sign up for our email list. We'll be telling you in just the next couple days how you can actually engage on this issue, how you can actually contact your legislators and make a difference. and. Um, I would just say in, in closing that this is something that is for everybody. This isn't just for people who have come out of the, the gay lifestyle. This isn't just for people who are involved in the, uh, the political arena. This is a gospel issue. That's right. If you call yourself a follower of Christ, if you believe that 
we are supposed to be salt and light. If you believe that what Jesus said as part of his mission was to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim freedom to the captives and the day of the Lord, if that's part of the gospel, then we cannot allow the legislature of Sacramento, no matter how well-intentioned they are, right. we cannot allow them to force us to put our lights under a bushel. Mm -hmm. We have to shine our light. Um, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm almost gonna start singing the children's song right now, but it's true. <laughs> we have to let our little light shine. That's right. So I hope you'll join us. Thank you so much to Ken and Elizabeth for joining us today. And we'll have lots more information. We'll put a link to Equip to Love and their ministry in the comments. I strongly encourage you to go follow them, follow the great work that Bethel Redding is doing, and uh, we'll be back with you with a lot more videos, maybe later today, but certainly in the next few days and the next few weeks. God bless.